In this edition of Locked On Capitals, we get to know Henrik Borgstrom. Who is he exactly and where does he fit into this Capitals lineup? Let's talk about that next on this edition of Locked On Capitals. Locked On Capitals, your daily podcast on the Washington Capitals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, hello and welcome into this edition of Locked On Capitals. I'm so glad you decided to join me today. As always, this podcast is free and available on all the major platforms. And I want to thank you for making this your first listen or view of the day. Yes, this podcast is also available in video form, so head on over to YouTube and check it out. And when you're on YouTube, make sure and hit the subscribe button. And if you like the videos, hit the thumbs up. It really helps grow the channel. My name is Dan Holmey. You can find me on Twitter. It's at DanCaps218. You can find the show on Twitter. It's at LockedOnCaps. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. So in this episode, we are going to talk about Henrik Borgstrom, kind of one of those depth signings that Mac made around free agency at the center position primarily. We're going to talk about in this episode is where does he fit in? Um, At the end of the day, you really can't have too much depth in the forward or center position as far as that goes. So just right off the start, the Capitals... Signed forward Henrik Borgstrom, according to Puckpedia. It's a one-year, two-way deal that pays $750,000 at the NHL level and $400,000 at the AHL AHL level. The Chicago Blackhawks bought out Borgstrom's contract on that Monday. Borgstrom played in 52 games for Chicago in 21-22, dishing four goals and three assists. He has 13 goals and 13 assists through 110 career game uh, career. NHL games rights Washington hockey now so just a real good move by the Capitals uh, if we take a look at primarily why where does he fit into this team is you could say you know take a look at the Nick Backstrom uh, injury for example now I know that you know ostensibly it's going to be Dylan Strom's job to be the second line center but you know nothing is set in stone according to what Brian McClellan said and I do think that's true um, because if you take a look at Dylan Strom for example he can also play wing so I think the things that we look at and how they're going to be lined up might not necessarily be how they play out. Um, On paper, it sure does appear that way. But if you take a look at Borgstrom, um, I think, you know, like I talked about, if you take into consideration COVID, if you take into consideration injuries, all of those things and factor them together, you can never really have too much depth in any position. And um, being that it's a two-way deal, uh, he d- will get guaranteed a certain amount playing on the big team, the Capitals, and he also will get a different amount if he goes down to AHL Hershey. So in any event, I think the Capitals will be sitting in a good position because say they don't find a spot for him uh, on this roster on opening night, they could still have him at least um, he could have, he could be a healthy scratch or they could send him down to Hershey um, and he would be available if the Capitals needed him. I mean, like we talked about last season, COVID was a thing and I know it's waning a bit right now, but there is still going to be COVID protocols and that thing in next season and uh, injuries and, and, you know, player performance, all those sort of things. So I think it was just some real sound judgment uh, on the Capitals' part to pick up Borgstrom. And, uh, you know, like I say, never have too much. Borgstrom rose to the NHL ranks after a strong showing while playing with the University of Denver. The six foot three, 199 pound center can use his size to his advantage and is a versatile player who can also play the wing. He also has a good shot and can make plays as well. While Borgstrom doesn't have great numbers at the highest level, he is only 24 and still has plenty of upside. So that's what I'm talking about. You take a look at these players, and a lot of times that's what they are is raw talent. And uh, if you take a look at... um, A lot of the different players that the Capitals have picked up, um, if you take a look at Conley, for example, he was a bit of a diamond in the rough. He came to the Capitals and had career uh, numbers playing for the Capitals. He has since gone on and and, and not done too well. Um, So 
that's what I'm talking about is Brian McClellan and the scouting staff, their ability to, to kind of um, look through and, and read through the lines and kind of read the tea leaves on a lot of these players and, and to find some value on this team. And I think, do I think that Henrik Borgstrom has a spot on this team? Absolutely. Um, do I think he's going to make the opening night roster that I'm not so sure. Um, I do think that it is going to be competitive um, as we head into training camps. Um, but that competitive environment is a good environment uh, in all of sports. It's good for the Capitals uh, because what you're going to get is it's going to really bring out the best in each one of the players. And, uh, you know, I think that if you take a look at his record, um, like they talked about, a bit of a raw talent, but he is a younger man. And uh, I do think that, you know, he can find a spot on this team. You know, if you take a look at last season and you take a look at the injuries that the Capitals face, even in the playoffs, you know, for example, you take a look at Tom Wilson, who just kind of suffered, you know, what appeared to be kind of a fluke accident. And uh, that ended up being the end of his season. So, you know, just kind of tying that back to this position or you take a look at Nick Backstrom, there, you always kind of have to plan for the unexpected. And in that this case, we're talking about um, Borgstrom. And, uh, you know, I think that he does um, have a spot on this team at some point when he will end up playing on the big team, I guess, really remains to be seen. But, um, you know, it's a Chicago Blackhawks team that uh, really appears that they are burning it down and tearing it down to the studs and just kind of really searching for an identity. And um, I'm not too sure what their plan is. I, it almost seems, you know, I hate to say it, but it almost seems like they're kind of uh, almost intentionally trying to tank next season. If you take a look at, they got rid of Debrinket, They got rid of Strom earlier in the season. They got rid of Andre Fleury. Uh, the Chicago Blackhawks are uh, going to be a team that is desperately searching for an identity going ahead. And it's, it's an interesting move. And I think that, you know, that is a team in transition, but uh, you know, uh, Chicago Blackhawks loss can be the Washington Capitals gain. I mean, we picked up some great players in the form of Dylan Strom and it appears that Henrik Borgstrom is going to have some good upside to him as well. So I think that things are looking up for the Capitals um, as we head into, you know, we're coming up on the start of training camp here in what, about six weeks or so. So just some really great and solid moves. All right. So after the break here, we are going to continue to talk about Henrik Borgstrom and where does he fit in this lineup. And then we're going to kind of rewind the time, the rewind the clock and see what kind of player is he really. We'll talk about that. But first... BetOnline.net is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your betting needs. Find all your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games. Find reviews and news of every league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, esports, and even golf. BetOnline continues to be the top online resource for all your sports wagering information from live in game betting, sports, and podcasts they have you covered. And that's what I'm talking about with Bet Online. is you can go to that website and you can get all of the info that you need on all major sports and then you can place a bet and it makes the games that you watch that more exciting. Head to Bet Online today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet Online, where the game starts. All right, welcome back to this edition of Locked On Capitals. I'm so glad you decided to join me today. In this episode, we are talking about Henrik Borgstrom and where does he fit in on this Capitals team. And, uh, you know, it was some bargain shopping for the Capitals as when they went out and they signed him. If you take a look at it, 750000 you know, that's that's a bit of a gamble, you know, um, but, you know, on, on, on Henrik Borgstrom, you know, his numbers don't scream out that I'm a huge success, but... I think, you know, like I talked about some raw talent there and getting him for $750,000 on the big team and $400,000 if he plays in Hershey, not too bad of a deal. And what is the big uh, thing about signing him to this deal is that we always hear that the Capitals don't have a lot of Finns or people, players from Finland on the team. And it's kind of an odd thing. Um, I, I'm not really sure why that is. The Capitals just historically have not had um, a lot of uh, Finnish players on the team. So Borgstrom, the Helsinki Finland native, added five points, two goals, three assists in eight playoff games. Borgstrom was selected by the Florida Panthers in the first round, 23rd overall in the 2016 NHL draft. Borgstrom recorded a career-high 18 points 
eight goals and 10 assists in 50 games with Florida during the 18-19 season, while also registering 22 points, five goals, 17 assists in 24 games with the Springfield Thunderbirds of the AHL. Borgstrom has recorded 26 uh, points, 13 goals, 13 assists, and 110 career NHL games with Florida and Chicago. In 73 AHL games with Springfield, Borgstrom has recorded 45 points, 16 goals, and 29 assists. Borgstrom attended the University of Denver, where he recorded 95 points, 45 goals, and 50 assists in 77 games over two seasons. During the 17 and 18 season, Borgstrom led the NCHC in scoring and helped Denver capture the NCAA championship. So, you know, he definitely does come from a pedigree of winning and an NCAA championship is a big deal. Borgstrom was named the NCHC Forward of the Year. NCHC Player of the Year was selected to the NCHC First All-Star Team and the NCAA First All-American Team and was a Hobie Baker finalist. So, you know, if you take a look at him, you know, like I say, his his time in the in the NHL hasn't really stood out. But if you take a look and you rewind time a little bit, uh, you see that he played really well um, in the college ranks and he played uh, rather well in his AHL career. So I think that, you know, that was Mac and company kind of rolling the dice and saying, you know what, maybe he was a victim of circumstance. Maybe he didn't play that well because he was playing on a team that, you know, didn't have a good supporting cast or good supporting players around him. Maybe if we put him on a different team, maybe he will, you know, do a lot better, you know, a different coaching system. You know, you take a look at Peter Laviolette and company, you know, sometimes just a different coach and different scenery can make all the difference in the world. You know, I take a look back at Kempney. Now I know Kempney towards the end of his career wasn't that good, but take a look at Kempney when he first uh, came to the Washington Capitals, you know, kind of not a big namer on the NHL, but his first year or so with the Capitals, he played very well until he suffered an injury. You take a look at Jensen, who came from the Red Wings, another player that, you know, uh, kind of a name that you heard around, but not stellar. And when he first came to the Capitals, you know, a lot of people were like, well, why did the Capitals pick up Jensen for? But if you take a look at Jensen's numbers last season, you can see why they picked him up. Just he's really developed his game. And, you know, you take a look at Henrik Borgstrom. He's a guy that I think we might look at in a year or two from now and go, wow, you know, he didn't have really solid numbers in his previous uh, team that he played for. But wow, look at how he contributed to this team. So that's what you kind of have to do. And I know it's not just Mac. He has scouts and all these other guys. But, it, you know, he put those those coaches and scouts in their places, and uh, it's good on the Washington Capitals and company for just finding a lot of these diamonds in the rough sometime. And uh, I, I think that, you know, in all uh, purposes here, that it looks like Borgstrom is on track to, to have a really – uh, a good season for the Capitals. You know, like I say, long-term, I don't know where he's going to fit in, but, um, you know, I think that he's worth a gamble. And, you know, getting him for $750,000 uh, on the big team is some bargain shopping, and I think it's it's a worthwhile investment. All right, so after the break here, we are going to continue to talk about Henrik Borgstrom. We're going to kind of look at the origin story and where does he come from. We'll talk about that next. Hello and a welcome back into this edition of Locked On Capitals. In this edition, we are talking about Henrik Borgstrom and where does he fit into this Capitals team. Let's take a look back and, you know, kind of take the face off the clock and look at the gears of Henrik Borgstrom and uh, see what kind of player he is. This was an elite prospects thing back from 2017. So we can kind of take a look and see what were their thoughts on, on Henrik back then. I don't think there was another player in college hockey I was more excited to see live than Denver friend freshman Henrik Borgstrom. The Finnish forward, forward was a late riser in last year's NHL draft, moving all the way into the first round when the Florida Panthers selected him at 23rd overall. Borgstrom quickly adjusted to North America and the NCAA game, scoring 16 points in the first half of his rookie year and drawing some rave reviews from people that had watched him play. 
Then came the World Juniors, which was a disaster for Borgstrom. There are multiple places to point blame for Finland's embarrassing ninth place finish, the worst the country has ever done in the tournament, but certainly having 19-year-old NHL first-round draft be held scoreless in six games has to be near the top of the list. So I was extremely interested to give Borgstrom a closer look when the Pioneers traveled to St. Cloud State last weekend for a pair of games against the Huskies to help better form my opinion. And, you know, you take a look at these young players. They can have off games. I mean, you can have off games in the AHL and the NHL. I don't think that we can kind of look at him too disparagingly that way. I'm not sure how one would say where the heck was that in finish, but watching Borgstrom play last weekend, I couldn't help but imagine a fired World Juniors coach somewhere in Helsinki saying exactly that. Borgstrom was terrific over the two games, notching just one goal, but creating multiple other chances with highlight reel type plays. And, you know, I got to say that this is probably what Mac and company was looking at. You know, you kind of take a look at some of these players and you say, well, you know, he didn't do too good for the Blackhawks and he didn't play too good in Florida. But hey, if you rewind the clock better, you can see that at one point, he was a great player. At one point, he was he was revered as one of the better players in Finland. So that's that's what you have to have. You have to have kind of a good ability to see down the football field and kind of just that ability to see the better uh, player inside. Denver lists Borgstrom at six foot three, one hundred and ninety five pounds. Given the eye test, I would say the height seems pretty close to accurate, but he doesn't look to be up to one hundred ninety five pounds. He looks very lanky. And like he still has a lot of filling out to do because of the lack of muscle. Borgstrom is still knocked off the puck pretty easily, but that only happens if the defense is able to body him up, which is extremely hard to do in open ice. Borgstrom has some amazing hands, especially in traffic, which makes him really hard to stop in one-on-one situations. On Friday night, he went one-on-one against a defender on the rush and made a slick move to turn the defender's feet and then exhibited some insane body control to get off a shot between his legs. That almost went for a goal. The next night, he showed really quick hands to stick handle through four people in the offensive zone and get off a shot against almost went for a goal. He's a player that makes you hold your breath every time he gets the puck because he has a potential to do something special. Hmm. I got to say, I like that. I think that, you know, I, I see what the capital saw in him. I see that, you know, he's a guy that didn't have a good, a good uh, go of it with Chicago, but there's more to it. The other big time skill Borgstrom possesses is a deadly wrist shot. Early on Friday night, he came down the middle of the ice with a puck on a three on two. Rather than passing the puck, he slowed up to create a little space for himself and wired a wrist shot that clearly beat the goalie for a goal. He's able to use his big frame to really whip the puck, making his for a very hard shot and heavy shot. He showed a nice ability to create shots for himself in the offensive zone, as well as blocking off defenders with fake passes. So, I mean, he he lost his way at some point in the NHL, but, I mean, take a look at those. Those are rave reviews. You don't hear about those too often. There are still some finer points to Borgstrom games that need work. He's making an effort on the defensive end, but sometimes gets a bit lost and out of position, and he sometimes struggles to handle some difficult passes, but that's to be ex- expected for a player his age and are likely things that are going to develop over time. So, you know, kind of a, a common theme with a lot of these uh, younger players. I talked about Ivan Miroshachenko, another simple, uh, similar uh, kind of um Uh, depiction of him when he played in Russia, you know, great offensive upside, but, you know, kind of lacking on the defense side. So I think that, you know, that's kind of a common theme with a lot of the forwards uh, and they just have to work on it over time. It's, you know, it's a common thing. Even some NHLers have to work on that. I'd also describe his skating as good enough for a player his size. It's not a glaring weakness, but his speed isn't going to be a huge asset for him in the NHL. He's playing center right now for Denver, but in the long run, I see him moving to wing at the pro level. And as we know, he's played wing. He's also played center. I think that that's where he's going to slot in when he does play for the Capitals. But I mean, having that ability to be flexible and play the wing or play the center is always good. You take a look at that with Connor McMichael as well. Overall, I'm willing to write off his terrible world juniors as a function of whatever issues Team Finland as a whole was having that 
anything specific about Borgstrom. He definitely looks like a prospect with a really high scoring upside at the NHL level. He's not quite a finished product, but he's got some incredible tools that he can be taught and looks like he is making progress towards reaching his ceiling. Borgstrom projects at a first or second line scoring winger. There are some questions when Florida reached to take him at 23rd in the draft, but that pick could end up looking like a steal. And, um, you know, I think that it still could be. I'm not willing to write him off. You know, his numbers haven't been that great. Um, That was a story in SB Nation from 17. So that's what I like to do on some of these new players, these new acquisitions, um, is just to kind of look at the origin story and where do they come from. And, uh, you know, rarely do you do the Capitals pick up someone and you look at their origin story, you look at the scouting report and you go, wow, that's that was horrible. You know, they were horrible when they're young and they're hor- horrible now. Why did they pick them up? Rarely is that the case. And if you take a look at Borgstrom, his numbers playing for the for the um, Blackhawks weren't glowing. They weren't something that, you know, kind of stands out. You as like we need some of that on our team. But it's the ability to say, you know, he was a great player at one point. How can we get him back to that again? And uh, I think that it's something that can be done. You know, like I talked about, it's a two-way deal. He can play in Hershey. He can play in Washington. There's some flexibility there. So I think that it's it's going to be good for the Caps. I think it's going to be good for the Bears. I mean, he's going to find a spot. And, uh, you know, you just take a look at, you know, like injury and player performance. All of these things, you put them all in a blender and you see, and you, you sometimes you can't see at the moment why you picked up this depth guy. But then, you know, later in the season, you're like, oh, I, now I see why, why we did that. You know, I point to taking a look at the Pittsburgh Penguins. I've talked about this before. Having that really great number three goalie. You know, oftentimes you hear about the number one, you hear about the number two, but you don't hear about the third string guy, you know, talking about uh, the Pittsburgh Penguins. Having Louis Domingue start in the playoffs probably wasn't according to script. They probably were thinking to themselves, you know, we probably should have thought about this and had someone better at number three. You know, I'm not trying to say anything about Louis Deming, you know, ultimately kind of seemed like he kept him in there, but, you know, he's not that marquee name. So kind of bringing this all back to to the caps here is that you can never have enough depth at center. You can never have enough depth forward players. And uh, I think, like I talked about, it's good for the Capitals to stockpile these players because... You know, you take a look at it. This is a team that has that window that's open, but it's closing as these players get older. You know, Ovechkin is getting more and more gray and getting more and more miles on the odometer. But, you know, don't tell him that he's scoring more goals than he ever has. But what I'm saying is that father time is coming for us all, and eventually it will catch up with Ovechkin. And we need to have plans for the future. We need to know who's going to be the next Ovechkin, who's going to be the next Nick Backstrom, you know, on this Capitals team. So having some raw talent, and, uh, you know, and have being ready for the future, because even if say, you know, that Borgstrom doesn't fit in with this team, you know, it's always a player that you could flip for someone else. So it's good to have these kind of assets on the big team, the capitals. And it's also good to have those assets in Hershey because, you know, Hershey, we gotta, we gotta have enough players on the ice in Hershey as well. And, uh, you know, they're always a contender down in, in the American Hockey League. And uh, we want that to be for years to come because it's always a pool for the Capitals to draw from. You got the Stingrays, you got the Bears. All of these players are eventually going to be future Caps or, you know, potentially future NHL players somewhere. So it's good that the Capitals um, are able to pick up these depth players that eventually will have a spot in the NHL. Thank you for making Locked On Capitals your first listen every day. Now make your second listen Locked On NHL. Locked On experts give you a daily 30-minute podcast on all things NHL all year long. Stay up to date on everything in the hockey world. Locked On NHL, your daily 30-minute NHL podcast. So once again, thank you for joining me on this edition of Locked On Capitals as we make it through the summer months. You know, it is the last day of July as I'm recording this. It'll be August 1st tomorrow. So then, you know, we have a month and and some change, and then it'll be training camps. The show will be going back to five days a week at that point, and it'll be the start of training camps. And the start of hockey season is always fun, isn't it? I always look forward to the future and how all these players gel together. And the Capitals made quite a few acquisitions in this offseason, so it's going to be even more exciting than previous years just to see how they all fit together. All right, so once again, thank you for joining me on this edition of Locked On Capitals, and I'll talk to you next time.